Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Hey, today I'm jumping back on the 125MX and you know, I've, I've really been having trouble with this thing, but I got a lot of uh, good suggestions. So the first thing that I'm doing is rewiring the stator. I've, uh, I've gone in, pulled all the wires out that I could. Uh, everything on the stator I've replaced. Of course, I can't do that on the uh, CDI box. So the CDI box is getting all the connections cleaned the best I can, can do it. And actually, I'd, I'd run a brass wire brush through them before uh, trying to clean them out. Uh, but I did it again and I'm changing the uh, spark plug cap. One gentleman saw that and he says, uh, we need to uh, make sure that you do not have a resistor cap on there. And there is. So I'm taking that off. I'm putting a non-resistor cap on. I tried the 360MX and it did not have a resistor cap, but it wasn't the right coil. So I've got the right coil and I'm changing out the cap on it for a non-resistor cap. And of course it's got a non-resistor plug in it. But anyhow, we're narrowing things down and uh, you know, for the most part, I've already done all the wiring on the stator. Uh, I'm just getting ready to put it back in the bike I'm finishing up wiring, uh, rewiring all the the um, the kill switch, uh, the wiring that I put in from the coil to the CDI box, everything that I can change or go through and check, I'm doing. So that's that's uh, that's all I can do at this point. So let me get you overhead here, and I'll show you what I've done to the stator. There's just so much corrosion, and they use this uh, Loctite in the uh, threads of everything. It makes it very difficult to get out, and I'm kind of wondering if, you know, if you don't clean that stuff out, then it's causing resistance in the grounding or whatever. So, you know, I, uh, the... Uh, the pulsar coil right here, there was so much corrosion underneath here. So I took this over and sandblasted it, and now I'm cleaning all that uh, Loctite out before I didn't want to, you know, I just was, I guess, so scared of the CDI that I just didn't want to disturb anything and maybe that was my problem I don't know but I'm gonna go ahead and wire brush everything clean everything up so I've got good good connect uh, conductivity and all the uh, terminals the connectors all that stuff is going to be cleaned and I've uh, had to do some rewiring I just thought, well, these wires are just not looking real good, so we do some rewiring. Uh, we'll do what it, what we can. We'll do what we can. And I'm going through and cleaning all the the Loctite and rust off these screws. It's just there's just been a lot of corrosion in there. And, you know, anything electrical needs good conductivity. And, you know, it's just, you know, with the old system, the old points and everything, I think everything was just so much more forgiving. And at this point, I'm running into gremlins that I probably wouldn't run into on a point system. Let me just show you here a couple of the screws.
screws. These are a couple of them that I took out and these are in such bad shape I like to never got them out because uh, if, if I hadn't had the guns, gunsmithing screwdrivers I don't think I would have gotten them out. And of course they would have broke off into this piece which you need. That's your basically your nut. So I've got another backing plate I can steal a couple screws out of but it's just uh, just a lot of little things you know who knows if I end up fixing the thing you probably won't even know what I did but you know what are you gonna do you've just got to you've got to figure out something you know I'm taking the people at their word that all the parts that I got came off the same bike uh, except for the coil of course and the coils seem to be pretty standard through most of the uh, YZ years and for that matter the uh, MX that used the the uh, coils or the same coils pretty much and it's uh, you know you just don't know you know, so you're, you've got to, you can't leave anything uncovered. You've got to go through everything and check it all out. I've read a lot about this stuff. I still don't know a lot of, you know, just only thing I really know maybe is theory. Uh, but I have learned that, hey, I can, I can uh, melt off insulation and rewire things without uh, hurting anything. In the past I just thought that that was uh, you know taboo you just didn't do it and I I don't know you know if man put it together man should be able to uh, clean it, disassemble it, reassemble it and uh, not have any problems with it as long as you're careful. Take a wire brush to everything and clean it as you can. got over and pretty much polished this these areas here I don't know whether there's anything that grounds there or not but uh, I've just pretty much polished everything so that I can uh, make ensure that I have uh, connection there and we get we get down into the terminals with our little brush And the male ones we can hit with a wire brush. Okay, so I dug the uh, the compound off of the terminal on both coils, and I've got my own stuff for that red varnish insulating varnish uh, that's that's what I used for the red and I actually have some uh, clear stuff uh, not much of this gets that but that's what I'm using anyhow I put all new wires put it back just like it should be so I'm getting ready to take this over and put it on the bike so I had all my wires that I just I, I have got just about every tracer wire that I've needed over the past years so I made sure I had everything that was uh, uh, pretty much the way it's supposed to be the right color codes all that stuff so uh, now that's what I'm doing over at the bike I'm finishing that up so I'll take you over there and I'll show you okay on the bike 
uh, when I got, when I bought the kill switch, it had a oh about a foot long wire on it, not enough for anything that I know of. And I put a splice in that coming on down here, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But I took the the kill switch completely apart, ran a new wire, and I actually. Uh, I've got the ground going, also a ground from here down to the ground here that's going to the CDI box. So, and there's the coil wire, the one going to the coil. So I've got a ground from the kill switch to, to the kill switch and a ground to the CDI box and the orange wire going from the coil to the CDI box. And all that's back here. And we're, uh, well, I think we're just about ready to, to put the um, stator back in and we'll finish plugging stuff up. So the, uh, the coil actually did have, this is a resistor type cover. This is a non-resistor. I just bought that. I had to get that one. I had a Sparky. Uh, I know these are, I know they're good. I used to use them, but I just really like the screw in stud that screws into the coil right there. So this one here is the proper coil, the 61-20, which is the CDI coil. So that one's going to get a new cap on it right there. So let me, uh, let me get some of this done and we'll see what we're up against from there. Okay. Make sure I've got my ground tightened up in there. Everything's tight on the back. My washer fell off of this one. I think that's pretty close to where it's supposed to go. I will take, I will reset it of course, but I'm not going to do it right now. And uh, I've got the piece that goes in here. Well, I'm going to have to find one. I, I thought I had one up there. Let's see if I can get this in without the key sliding out on me. Did I get it? No, I don't think so. No. Okay, I think it's on.
I have my boot slid up there. Okay, you can see that the uh, resistor type is a lot longer and it's taller this way too. And when you check it for resistance, you get some. Okay. It's not wanting to go down there. There. Okay. Good tight fit. All right. Now I'm just in time to undo this so I can check the timing again. See if we got fire. We don't want to lose anything. I don't know whether I think that might be too close for this GoPro. Get it right there. Looks good to me. All right. So at least we still have spark. Get our fuel. And our plug back in. Cold fuel. I was out there in the shed. I just don't like keeping it in here. It stinks. It's funny how gas doesn't even smell like gas anymore. Let's see. Get that. All right, get it back together. We'll. Here comes the moment of truth yet again. Just reset the timing, of course, again for, I don't know how many times have I done it now.
Got the new muffler. Not sure exactly what it was, but... I think that works pretty good. It's not uh, as loud in here as it used to be. Finally. Finally, finally, don't ask me what, what issue it was. Okay guys, there you have it, finally. Not sure what the issue was, but we did a lot of corrosion control. Uh, had a couple questionable wires that uh, I just replaced. Uh, The wires for the bike, I like I said, I completely redid all those uh, to ensure there were no splices anywhere on any wire. And uh, it's, I just don't know. Uh, like I say, there was a lot of corrosion under the, uh, uh, oh, what do they call this? The ex exciter coil or whatever. Uh, I had a wire back here that was uh, kind of questionable. It looked like it had corrosion coming up it. And uh, the solder looked maybe cold. So I replaced uh, both wires going to the coils. Like I say, I, I don't, oh, the, uh, the cap on the spark plug, I went from a resistor type that comes on most of these bikes, I think, because we never had really resistor plugs on them. Uh, so I had one gentleman, uh, Peter, I think, uh, said, uh, make sure you do not have a resistor cap on that thing. So I changed that, uh, changed the coil two or three times, but now I've got one that's it, that uh, according to the eBay auction, it was for a 74YZ. 125 so there's been a lot of changes done I couldn't tell you and that's that's the number one rule of troubleshooting is to do one thing at a time well I broke that rule because I just had all the stuff off I wanted to go through it get it all clean get anything questionable done and uh, that's where I ended up and somehow or another uh, we were successful, but I couldn't point to one thing at this point and tell you what it was. Uh, but I'm just glad that it's running okay. Of course, uh, getting it out in the snow ain't going to do anything, so I won't really know until the weather breaks. Uh, but it revs up, it runs, it idles, it does all that stuff. And uh, we got to listen to the muffler that we did in the last uh, video. I think that's helped a lot. I was out here, I imagine you remember the last several vehicles or uh, videos with my earmuffs on. And this time, I didn't think it was loud enough to, to put those on. So it's working. So that's a, that's a good validation on that too. Anyhow, uh, I'm gonna get the side cover put back on this and get my gas tank all put away 
and I can concentrate on some other issues now, uh, not necessarily with this bike, but I need to get back on the uh, Twinjet 90 and uh, the TS250 and the AT1 to CT1. I need to finish those up so I can go on to greener pastures. So hey, thanks for going along on the ride, and we'll see you next video.